Hey, this is Elise, and I'll be showing you the basics of using dialog boxes, which are a new addition to the Choreograph environment uh, with this recent update. These boxes allow you to create a rather powerful and elaborate sets of rules that make the robot conversational and reactive. So let's do a simple dialog. We're going to go into Templates, Dialog, grab one of those boxes. You can also find it up under Audio, Voice. And in fact, you're going to need a box from there as well called Set Language. So let's set these up together. Connect this to the global start, and this to the global end. This is just to make sure that our dialog is in the correct language and there's no confusion about that. So this dashed line just means that we don't have everything set up for this dialog bo it box. It's not connected to any topic. And we need to make sure that it's, it does that before we start trying to run it. So let's double click on that. And now we have the edit box window. So let's call this the howdy world dialog. And if we had previous dialogues set up, we could choose one of those if we wanted, for instance, something howdy related, but we don't, and we're going to add a new topic. It'll be the howdy world topic. Okay. Now we've got a real box. And in order to set this up so that the robot responds to certain inputs the way we want it to, we'll have to edit a completely different file than we've ever edited before. To get access to that, we'll go to View, Project Content. Now we've got all these files and folders associated with this project. The Howdy World folder is associated with this, and we want to take a look at the top file, or the topic file. That's this. Here is where we can set all sorts of input and output rules that govern the dialog. For example, I might want the robot, every time I say hello to it, to say, howdy there, partner. Or every time I say, how are you, I want it to say, my horse ran away. So let's save that and test it out. How are you? My horse ran away. Hello. How are their partner? Cool. So you notice how we didn't have to say these in order. Anytime you say something that matches the input, the output will happen. This is the user input rule. So if this input happens, then this rule fires and the robot responds with whatever is after the parentheses. Doesn't matter what order. So there are a, a couple different things you can do with this. What if I wanted to say other things than hello, like different greetings, hi, um, hey, things like that. What I do is I put square brackets around it, and now I've got a choice between these items in the brackets. I can say hello or hi or hey, and the robot will respond with the output. Let's save it and test it out. Hi. Howdy there, partner. Hey. Howdy there, partner. Awesome. Now, let's say I want to add in a few more things like hey there, or hi there, or even howdy. You notice that with these phrases, I have to enclose them in quotation marks so that it doesn't match there alone, or one of those other words. This is an entire phrase, and it has to match the whole thing. But now we've got a whole lot of things in one rule, and if I wanted to use it again and again, then that would be very cumbersome. So what I can do is take this list of words, I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to make a concept out of it. A concept is pretty much what it sounds like. We'll call it greeting. It's a list of inputs. Use curly braces around that list, and then you can call this concept in a user input or a robot output and it will just use this entire list in here. So I'm going to call this right here using a tilde and then the name of the concept. And then anytime I say something that matches something in the concept greeting, the robot will respond with howdy their partner. Let's save it and run it. Hi there. Howdy their partner. Hello. Howdy their partner. That's pretty cool. In fact, I can use this concept greeting in the robot's response as well. 
So it will respond with something from the greeting after I say something from the greeting. Let's save it and test it out. Howdy. Howdy. Hello. Hey. Hey. So if you notice, it starts with the first word and then just continues down the line of the word list because this is an ordered list and it treats it as a, a list in a particular order. But if I don't want that, if I want it to, for instance, say one of these at random and keep me guessing, then I can use what's called the random command. That's an up caret and rand, and this makes it so that it will choose a random word from inside the concept to use in its response. We'll save and run. Hi. Hey. Hey there. Hey. Hi there. Hey. That's pretty cool. It will say pretty much anything. There's no way to predict that. Let's see, what else can we do? Well, we can actually add actions to the robot's output. So it doesn't just have to respond verbally, it can respond physically as well. There are a couple different ways of doing that, and I'm going to show you the most basic, but in a later tutorial, we'll get to a more powerful way of doing that. So let's say I want the robot to wipe its forehead after saying my horse ran away because it's so tired. For that, we're going to use an animation in Motions Animations called White Forehead. I'll pull that out here, and we're going to make an output from this box to connect to this white forehead. So let's edit the box, right click, edit box. We'll go down to the outputs. It's only got one so far, and we're gonna add one more. We'll call it the white head box. White, white head output, I mean, okay? That's this guy right here that just appeared. Now in between this output and white forehead, I want to add a little bit of time. So I'm going to flow control, time, and wait. I want the robot to make sure it waits so that it doesn't confuse anything else it's doing with the action of wiping its forehead. All right. Now I have to make sure that I call, that I trigger this output at the correct time from my dialogue. Let's do that at the end of this uh, response here. We're going to do a dollar sign and then the name of my output, wipe head, equals one. Okay, that is going to send the activation out of this output and down into this line of actions. We'll save it and then right now I've got my robot on uh, rest mode so that it doesn't use up battery and energy and a lot of, you know, make its motors hot, but I want it to use its motors so we've got to engage that and wake it up. All right, now that it's woken up, let's give this dialogue a shot. How are you? My horse ran away and I'm tired. Really cool. Let's stop that and make it rest again. You might have noticed that there were a few other motions it was doing while it was talking. This is a part of the update that while it's talking, it will do all these animations. And in the next uh, tutorial about dialog boxes, we'll learn how to harness that power and control it a little more closely. In the meantime, it's a really cool um, addition to the dialog box uh, capabilities. Okay, so now we've got a few things we can do with this. What if we want to have the robot able to talk about lots of different things? Here's a, a dialog box all about howdies and greetings and horses. What if I wanted to talk about food? If, well, all we have to do is grab another dialog box and we can connect it to the same set language and then just set it up. We'll call it the food talk box and we'll add a new topic called food talk. Okay. And then we'll go here. Notice how the food talk has uh, popped up and we can double click the topic file and now we're editing it in the script editor. So let's add a few rules. We'll say let's talk about food and the robot will say okay I'm hungry. We can have the robo robot respond to us when I say what do you want? It can say I could go for some spaghetti. Or if I say, 
I like chocolate, they might say, I sure do too. Okay. But one thing you can do when you've got multiple files like this is you can actually make specific rules private to certain topics. That is to say, if we're talking about horses and greetings and suddenly I say, what do you want? It doesn't just switch over to food talk and say, oh, I could go for some spaghetti. I can make this a private rule with the up caret private. And that means that only when this topic is active does it respond. I'll make this rule private too. By active, I mean the sort of the same thing as when you click to different windows in your computer to act with, interact with different windows. These top files become active when you, when you say an input that is not private to one of them. So for example, both of these uh, boxes get activation and I say, hello. That makes this top file active and all of these rules are available. Then I can say, let's talk about food. So it switches to this topic and now all of these, since this topic is active, all of these rules are available. If we were in this topic, then these private rules would not be available. So let's test that out for a more practical demonstration of what I mean. Hello. Hi. Hi. What do you want? Hey. How are you? My horse ran away and I'm tired. Let's talk about food. Okay, I'm hungry. What do you want? I could go for some spaghetti. I like chocolate. I sure do too. How are you? My horse ran away and I'm tired. So, as you saw, but when I said, what do you want, while this, this uh, topic was active, the robot did not respond to it. It thought, in fact, that I said something from this concept up here. But once we switched to talking about food by using this non-private uh, rule, then this rule is available, and I could say, what do you want? And it would respond in this way. So that's a little bit of how you can control what your robot is talking about at any point in time. And in fact, you can get pretty powerful with that. And this is the basics of using dialog boxes. In the next tutorial about dialog boxes, we'll get into some more detail. Thanks a lot for listening.